Hello and welcome to the second video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own piano game app in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover adding our notes in as assets and we'll start doing some programming. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and assets for this series there too along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. And now on with the tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to import the notes that we're going to use on our piano. So in our assets folder right here I'm going to drag and drop this folder which is called notes. And I will leave a link in the description and in the pinned comment for you to click on and go and download these notes for your app. Obviously you don't have to use these, you could use any ones at all that you find in an asset store or an asset website. Uh, but like I say, you can get these for free if you go and click the link. So in these notes we have multiple different files. So we have uh, the A, B, C, D, you know, all the keys that we're going to need, including the sharps uh, or flats, whatever you want them to be. Uh, in this case, we're going to refer to them as uh, sharps. And we have the upper and lower. So you could do a full length piano. I'm not going to do a full length piano. I'm just going to do two sections of the piano. And you can obviously take that further if you want to. So how do we make it so as this? actually works. Well, what we're going to do first is we're going to test everything out with our keyboard and make sure that functions as normal. So we're going to need to add a game object for our C key as that's the first one that we're going to use. So let's go to game object. Let's go to create empty and that will flag up as a game object and it will allow you to rename this. So what are we going to call this? We're going to call this low C. And what that means is that's going to be our C key on the low end of our piano. Now what we need to do is drag and drop the low C value, uh, low sorry, the low C audio file onto the low C hierarchy file. So like that. And it's dragged it onto there for whatever reason. Let's try that again. Low C onto low C. And you'll see that over here you now have an audio source applied. You can see that play on awake is ticked. And if we were to press play now, it will indeed play that note. When it decides it's going to. Because it is ticked by the way. There we go. So there is our first note. So we've got some sound in our game now. But what we need to do is we need to untick play on awake. And what that will do is it will prevent it from playing whenever our app starts. And what we need to do is we need to create some code that allows us to press, in this case, let's do the Q key, and that will be our first key. So let's go to our assets again. Let's right click, create, and let's go on folder and call this scripts. And in here, let's right click, create, and we have C-sharp script here, but in, I think, Unity 6, this may be referred to as a monoscript or mono behavior script. But either way, it's the same thing. So let's create this script and let's have this as key control. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. What is Visual Studio? It's the place that you can do all of your programming in. Now, some of you may not have programmed before. Some of you may have done. Uh, but we're going to quickly go through a couple of things that basically instantly appear in this script. These are the default views of the script. So here at the top, we have something referred to as the namespace. The namespace you think of a little bit like a library. It's where all the information is stored for the script to reference. I.e., let's say you want to understand something about dinosaurs. You go to a library to read a book and now you have that information in your brain and you can recite that information and do things with that information. That is exactly how the script is working here. It needs to know something from, for example, the Unity engine, so it references it in the namespace. Next we have the class. Now the class name has to be identical to the actual script name. So remember we called the script key control? Well make sure that the class is always named key control. 
If you change the name of the class, make sure you change the name of the script and same other way around. Change the script, change the class. Next, we have these highlighted in green. These are just annotations. These aren't lines of code. They're just ways of putting, putting little notes inside the script itself. So let's say you want to make a note, i.e. in this case, start a call before the first frame update. You just put a double slash and there you go. You can put a note. So that line is never executed as code. Next, we have some methods. In this case, we have the start and update method. And you can see just here by the annotations that they tell you exactly what they do. Start only runs once and it's done on the first frame. Update is referred every single frame that the game is running. So in this case, you could think of update as a way of constantly monitoring something within the game. That's how we're going to approach the programming for this piano app. So we need to make sure that we have every single frame, this script, understanding whether we're doing something, i.e. are we pressing the Q key? Are we pressing something on screen? You know, something like that. So how do we do this? Well, let's get rid of void start and let's get rid of the annotations because we do not need them. What we do need, however, is a variable. What is a variable? Well, a variable can be used in many different ways, but for us, what we're going to use it as is a way to determine what an object is. So we're going to declare a variable as a game object because that game object is going to be the note that we play. So to do this, we're going to open square bracket and we're going to type in serialize field. And we're also going to give this variable a definition. So we're going to have it as a game object. And now we need to name this variable. What can we name it? Well, something useful. It's the low C key. So let's call it low C with a semicolon. Why do we need the semicolon? Easy. That's just to say the line has now ended and we can move on to the next line of code. Now, one thing I will notice as I hit return here, Unity, or Visual Studio in this case, will try and assume what it thinks lines of code actually are. You don't necessarily have to agree with it, but in this case, it thinks the next variable that we want to declare is high C, and that's not going to be the case. So for now, we can just ignore that and go to our void update and click here between the curly brackets. So what do we want to happen? Well, we want to be able to press our Q key and then play that note that we have imported into our hierarchy. But to do that, we need to do something really clever first. We need to turn that note off and then turn it back on instantly. Now, because this is a very simple app, it's not going to be horrendously tedious on resources. So although this isn't you know, the ultimate best, fantastic, best way of doing it, it's the easiest, quickest, and most useful, and most understanding for newcomers to Unity. So, like I say, we're not aiming for some mega cool Call of Duty style coding here. So how do we do this? Well, we need to detect an input. So we need to see if we're pressing the Q key. So to do that, we need to use an if statement. So we say, if, and in brackets, input, and that's a capital I. And remember, capitalization is hugely important when it comes to programming, because in the case of game object up here, game object with a lowercase g is something different to game object with an uppercase g. So just make sure you do the correct capitalization. So input dot get key down. And in brackets, we need to put the key code and then the key that we want it to reference. So in this case, we put key code dot Q, close bracket, close bracket, open curly bracket and hit return. So what have we done here? Well, we've stated if the input is pressing down code Q, then we do the following. And what do we do? Well, we can say low C dot set active and you'll see right, right now it is predicting what we're going to put and it is exactly as we want so we need to press tab and tab again 
and that will fill in the line of code rather than us having to type it out. So if we hit return, we can do the same again, low c dot, and it's already predicting what we're going to do. So let's agree with it. Let's press tab until it turns the correct color and is no longer grayed out. So what have we done in this script? Well, we've said, if we're pressing Q, then turn off low C and then immediately turn it back on. Now, do you remember when we had play on awake set as active? That's now going to come into play. So let's save that script and then head back into Unity. Give it a second just to compile. It may take a couple of seconds. You can see it doing there. Shouldn't take too long. Usually with a script, it is fairly quick. There we go. So back into Unity. And now we need to apply this script to our scene. So what we'll do is we'll go game object, create empty again, and we'll call this um, scene control because when you use this for different things. So let's drag and drop key control onto the scene control object right there. And you'll see here, this is where we have low C, which is our game object here. So let's drag and drop low C over here. And what we've done there is we've told the script that when we've referred to a variable, this is what we mean when we refer to that variable. So now let's click on low C. Let's tick play on awake, but let's turn that object off. And you can do that up here, just underneath the inspector word there untick it and it will turn gray in your hierarchy. So now if we press play, we should be able to press the Q key multiple times and have that sound play no problem at all. Perfect. So the way this is functioning is even if that uh, C key is on, we turn it off and turn it back on again so we can reset that play on awake. So next time what we're going to do is we're going to expand the code for all notes and we're going to expand our piano layout because we still only have that one key. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and I'll see you next time.